I mentioned to you the Mu'tazila. And uh, there's a long discussion of the Mu'tazila and their beliefs. And we'll leave that for now. Amongst, in going through the discussion of the Mu'tazila, there's a very important point that's not directly related to our topic right now, but it's important that I mention it now since it's, uh, it's in front of me in the book. Is that Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, when discussing the books of tafsir by the Mu'tazila, and one of the most famous one, ones of these books is called Al Kashaf by Zamakhshari, uh, a commonly quoted book. And many people, because of the, uh, the, the tahqiq lughawi, the very strong uh, linguistic uh, arguments that are in the book, and sometimes very convincing passages that are in this book, they refer to it a lot some more than others. And it's a very dangerous book to refer to. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah used to warn against this book and tell people to stay away from this book. He mentions, وَمِنْ هَؤُلَاءِ مَنْ يَكُونُ حَسَنَ الْعِبَارَةِ فَصِيحًا وَيَدُسُّ الْبِدْعَةِ الْبِدْعِ وَيَدُسُّ الْبِدْعَةِ فِي كَرَامِهِ وَأَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ كَصَاحِبِ الْكَشَّافِ وَنَحْوِهِ Some of these authors of these tafsirs of the, from the Mu'tazila, those who have had this position, the, uh, the, from their aqidah is to put the naql in, the aql in front of the naql that they take uh, their intellect as a source greater than the source of the deen the text of the deen this tafsir of the Quran called the kashaf is something that is powerful in its expressions a very strong in its language but at the same time he has taken great care in putting innovation between the lines or in the words as you can say, between the lines. And he putting the very uh, concepts of innovation and the, uh, the keys to those ideas in those lines, in those uh, words that he has uh, expressed in his tafsir. حَتَّى إِنَّهُ يَرُوجُ عَلَى خَلْقٍ كَثِيرٍ مِنْ مَنْ لَا يَعْتَقِدُ الْبَاطِلِ مِنْ تَفَاسِيرِهِمْ الْبَاطِلَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ So much so that he has spread amongst a large group of people who had no intention of taking any falsehood from him, that they have actually taken... An, an amount of falsehood that Allah Azza wa Jal had uh, let them take. And then he said, here's the point. وَقَدْ رَأَيْتُ مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ الْمُفَسِّرِينَ وَغَيْرِهِمْ مِنْ, uh, مَنْ يَذْكُرُ فِي كِتَابِهِ وَكَلَامِهِ مِنْ تَفْسِيرِهِمْ مَا يُوَافِقُ أُصُولَهُمْ أَلَّتِي يُعْلَمُ أو يُعْتَقَدْ فَسَادُهَا أو أَلَّتِي, ألتي يَعْلَمُ أو يعتقد فسادها ولا يهتدي لذلك. I've seen in the writings of scholars scholars in general and scholars of tafsir and other than them Ibn Taymiyyah is referring to scholars here who have been affected by the words of Zamakhshari in his tafsir and they have unintentionally ended up agreeing to a principle of falsehood while in general being against that kind of principle and being someone who would never take that kind of a principle as a form of guidance but not being aware of every little thing that Azza Makshari wanted in his tafsir, they put their guard down, they let their guard down, and some innovation crept into their statements because of that. That's very important because of the many people today that say there is no harm in reading the books of the people of innovation so long as you stay away from the bad. Now think about what Shaykh al-Islam said here about scholars of tafsir. And the books that are in our library are a witness to this. Books are from Ahl al-Sunnah, Written, written in tafsir that have been affected by the likes of a Zamakhshari. And they convey the words of a Zamakhshari that have hidden meanings in them and support for falsehood without even knowing it. The, we, we witness, we, we bear witness to the truthfulness of Shaykh al-Islam's clarification here. Uh, the author, Shaykh Muhammad Bazmul, says here in a footnote, Allahu Akbar, يقول وقد رأيت من العلماء المفسرين Right? He said, look, at, I'm, he's talking about the ulama and the scholars of tafsir. And that he conveys or he, he quotes words of falsehood, not knowing that the words were words of falsehood. Then what about students of knowledge, beginners, and they're you know, being easy and letting their guards down with the likes of these kinds of books? He says, I saw scholars and ulama of tafsir and other than them, you know, quoting from these books without knowing. So how is it that a scholar who knows about I'tizal, knows about the bid'ah of Zamakhshari, would go and read his book and then quote words that would support the very foundations of I'tizal without knowing it? Is that 
There are some kinds of speech that are just magical because of a powerful expression, because of a precise explanation of an issue or something. The person said, that's great, that's a great explanation, that's something profound, I want to put that and quote that into my, into my book. So then what about the people who don't reach the level of the ulama, people like ourselves, people who try to study and people who try to learn, but they are nowhere near the ranks of the ulama.